Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Q3 FY24 Earnings Conference Call of AGI Green Pack Limited, hosted by Dollar Capital. As a reminder, all participants' lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Sachin Bobade from Dollar Capital. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, Muska. On behalf of Dollar Capital, I welcome you all to the Q3 by 24 conference call of AGI Impact. Hope you all and your family members are staying safe and healthy. From the management side, we have with us Mr. Rajesh Khosla, President and Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Om Prakash Pandey, Chief Financial Officer, and Mr. Sandeep Sikka, Group Chief Financial Officer. Now I hand the floor to the management for their opening remarks, and then we would have question and answer session. Over to you, sir. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to AGI Green Type Q3 FY2024 Earning Call. We have already circulated our earnings presentation, which is available on our website and a stock exchange website. I am happy to report a robust quarter of mark by growth in revenue from operation, with a 10% increase to 622 crores. Our EBITDA experienced a substantial upswing of 36%, reaching 153 crores, showcasing the success of our strategic focus on operational efficiencies and a superior product mix. The EBITDA margin improved is standing at around 25% compared to around 20% in Q3 FY23, indicating enhanced operational performance. Additionally, our earnings per share witnessed a positive option rising to Rs. 10.37 in Q3 FY24 as compared to Rs. 8.23 in Q3 FY23. As we look at the nine months FI24 result, there is a robust growth trajectory. Revenue from operations stands at 1,796 crores, reflecting a 12% year-on-year growth. And our EBITDA for the same period reached Rs. 432 crores, showcasing a substantial 48% year-on-year growth. Our net debt is stood at Rs. 585 crores as on 31st December 2023. We are committed to sustaining financial discipline, internal efficiencies, and our dedication to sustainable business practices. Now I would hand over the call to Mr. Khosla to discuss some of the key business highlights. Over to Mr. Khosla. Uh, thank you, Mr. Pandey. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I would like to highlight the few points that underscore our ongoing success. In this quarter, our utilization of the glass container capacity exceeded more than 95%, showcasing our commitment to the operational excellence and the optimization of our production capabilities. In recognition of our commitment to excellence, World number one player, or I can say world, one of the number one player in the world, has honored AGI Green Pack with the prestigious Supplier Award, Award of the Year, for the second consecutive year. This accolade stands as a testament to the quality and reliability of our products, and we take great pride in being recognized by them. As we move forward, our focus remains on innovation sustainability, strategic expansion, high margin products, categories to consistently deliver value to our stakeholders. We are also committed to the digitalization of all the processes, including our operations. And I would also like to express gratitude to our dedicated team and esteemed partners for their unwavering support. Now, we would like to open the call for any questions you may have. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from question queue, 
You may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking the question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for the moment while question queue assembles. And the first question is from the line of Pritesh Sheda. Sheda from Lucky Investment. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, is there any uh, rise in capacity or volumes between quarter three and quarter uh, quarter two and quarter three of this year? Uh, okay, there is no such increase in capacity. Uh, the capacity is same. The only thing is that the operational efficiencies have gone up. And that is what it has given the okay. more volumes or the more saleable volumes. Okay. So we are at about 1850 tons per day type capacity after the expansion. And the capacity utilization is excess of 95% for both these quarters, right? Yeah. Okay. So from here on, uh, for your growth, uh, what kind of capacities are expected to come or can you deliver any growth on these capacities? Uh, see, as such, uh, you know, we are not adding immediate capacities, but we are de bottlenecking a lot of capacities. And uh, last time also, when we have rebuilt the furnace, so we increased our capacity by 100 tons. Now, in this year also, when furnace number three is going to be rebuilt, so we have a plan to increase the capacity by by double two digits or close to three digits. So these the bottlenecks are going to add more value, more tonnages, more saleable, and better results. Okay. So in the last the bottleneck, you added about 100 tons, right? Yeah. Okay. And now you're going to do another the bottleneck. What, when is this lined up? Uh, this, everything will complete by the end of second quarter of next financial year. As per plan, the things may change depending upon so many more factors. But as per plan, it has to be end of the second quarter of next year. Okay. And lastly, any progress on the HNG side? Uh, I think, uh, Sandeep, uh, you can answer on this matter, please. So, matter is uh, with Supreme Court, and uh, um, we feel that hearings should start uh, now very soon. Our next hearing is on the coming Friday. Uh, but the courts take time, you know, in terms of uh, the, you know, their time taken, time to, you know, dispose of those cases. So, NCLAT, we had won the cases, whatever it is, and now it's pending with Supreme Court. So, once Supreme Court is done, I think uh, then we can move very fast. Because we are ready to implement, uh, but uh, till the Supreme Court matter is there, uh, will require, you know, time and patience to have an order there. Okay. Uh, so just one follow-up on this capacity expansion uh, at our end. So uh, you can only do these uh, uh, brown, uh, deep bottleneck lead uh, capacity addition uh, or uh, or post eventually after this you have to actually go for a green field only. Uh, I may like to answer you like this. As far as aspirations are concerned, they are certainly are very, very high. But looking to the practicality of the business, so deep bottom line is the best thing which can happen in this situation because the HNG, you know very well, we are committed to whatever we have been, we have uh, taken a stand of bidding and we are in the mid of something. So, so, so we have to keep a balance on that. Putting our hands in too many things uh, will be difficult for any management, including ours. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Chandresh Malpani from Nivishai Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. So, sir, what we understand is that in Q3, the realizations dropped but the volume didn't. So, how is the current situation panning up? Uh, as you know, as you know, the glass is a uh, is a semi commoditized uh, product when i say semi commoditized product it doesn't follow the rules and regulations of a commodity 
but uh, but still it is a semi commoditized because it has to be customized as per the customer requirements so so it is highly highly influenced by the input prices and other demand supply gaps so the increase or decrease in the price is quite linked not 100% linked but quite linked with the raw material and other input prices so when they get a little uh, soften it certainly going to the price has to be adjusted accordingly so the, that is the reason the price and i think we have been telling in the investors call few times earlier also that we have the price variation formulas with the customer and any increase or decrease in the cost is automatically adjusted with our customers so yeah. so so the price okay. is not a very important part more important part is uh, how to protect your margins and keep the things healthy uh, growing okay got it sir and secondly on this specialty uh, container uh, 154 tons per day capacity so we have been it's been one year now that we have been operating at 65 70% capacity utilization level so yeah. what challenges are we facing there to ramp, ramp up that capacity uh, more the product is complicated more challenging is the uh, learning curve uh, what we have to do so so we are we are in a very normal process of a learning curve of the specialty glass and uh, and every day we are moving upwards on that uh, learning curve so it's a very normal thing it's not a very uh, it's nothing uh, uh, special or uh, uh, stand out thing it's a very normal thing so by when can we expect uh, to reach that 90 95% kind of utilization levels i think so it it will take a at least in next financial year by the end of next financial year we hope so to hit that number Okay, so what is our target market here? Is it export? Export also. It's not only export. Export also is there, and the company and uh, the management is trying very hard to enter into the export market. So there is a there is a way, defined way of entering into the export market. First, we have to uh, cater the domestic market. understand the domestic market see the challenges see the product and all then you have to enter into nearby markets where the acceptability of any mistake or anything can be adjusted and then you go to the uh, western market so i think on this curve we are already moving one by one and now we have already planned to enter into the western part of the uh, world market okay sir thank you thank you thank you thank you The next question is from the line of Pramod Dangi from Unifi Investment. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks. Uh, and uh, uh, congratulations for the you know another good quarter. Uh, if you can give it two numbers, uh, one is if you can share the uh, how our trend the relation is going. I believe uh, our relation peaked in sometime in March or you know a quarter or two quarter back. So how the relation is going in the glasses? and if you can give the uh, a volume data for the glass on the sales side sales volume okay realization as you say they have peaked uh, sometime a uh, few months back again realization is directly proportional to the uh, input Cost. prices whatever are happening so whatever is the input prices blooming so accordingly the price of the glass got adjusted so it happens like that in a covid time yeah after covid time when there was a supply chain constraints were there uh, constraints were there uh, because of the natural gas prices fuel prices and soda ash prices the prices got uh, inflated and now they are coming back to the normal it may happen that tomorrow if there is a war and anything happen accordingly the situation can happen the same thing so my my request is uh, uh, the this uh, adjustment of the prices is not indicator of any of the things except uh, uh, the numbers and uh, they are to be adjusted uh, up and down as per the requirement so and as far as volumes are concerned and uh, we uh, mr sikka i think uh, you can uh, uh, pitch in because volumes we are not giving in our results and we don't disclose as i understand Okay, yeah. Because earlier, I think till December 22, we were giving some kind of a volume. Uh, I think last three quarters we 
during the volume number uh, the, the production of the sales board so but earlier quarters we have it. Uh, we have that in the conference call but uh, nevertheless just coming on the pricing side also uh, you know i i clearly you know i i understood what you are saying is if the input cost is going up uh, obviously our realization will go down but our ebitda margin see our concern is more on the ebitda margin uh, because you yeah. can see the spike on the ebitda margin also in the march quarter june quarter compared to what it was uh, you know uh, in the 22 uh, year 22 so if you can throw some light uh, or the some focus on the you know how the beta margin uh, we should look at uh, going forward uh, yeah beta um, pattern i'm talking about yes uh, in the uh, in the commodity type of business uh, where demand supply plays important role yes but uh, more focus is on the cost part and that is what we have been doing it so we our fo- our company focus is more on the cost part how to keep a control and lower down and become the lowest cost producer in the world that is the focus we have been doing it so we are de bottlenecking our capacities with these de bottlenecks we are reducing our cost we are entering into the new technologies we are using a digitalization technologies and we are doing the industry four things so that our cost can be controlled and new practices can be attained and this is what is giving us the edge Uh, on our results and everything which is visible to you sir okay thanks thanks thank you thank you the next question is from the line of vp rajesh from benyan capital please go ahead yeah hi uh, just a uh, couple of quick questions so uh, can you share the ebitda per ton for this quarter versus what it was year over year So EBITDA per ton this uh, whole nine months has been ranging somewhere around nine thousand five hundred, nine thousand four hundred, to around ten thousand, depending on quarter to quarter, because of the price adjustments. This I am talking of the commercial glass, uh, but for the high end, uh, uh, we have to yet fully load the furnaces. So we would not like to state the EBITDA per ton there right now because it's more strategic also in nature. Uh, but I can give you the guidance on the commercial glass. Uh, commercial content. This number. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, please go ahead. And what was this number last year? Apples to apples. Apple, uh, you know, would have grown uh, somewhere when you see nine months of uh, previous year and nine months of this year. Uh, the EBITDA per ton growth has been ranging around thirty percent. Okay. And is, uh, what is the lag? in the time period that you incur the cost and you are able to recover from your customer is it in the same quarter or is it on a monthly basis or if you can just explain that a bit uh as i told you okay, there are two set of customers we have uh, one is uh, we have the formula understanding and in the second it has to be adjusted as per the market forces so so there is a some particular ratios are there which can be 60 40 or 70 30 or something like that 70 are the formula based customer 30 are the market based customers so normally the formula based customers we have the different uh, timelines with them in some cases we adjust yearly some cases we adjust half yearly some cases we adjust quarterly also so there are different customers with the different as far as the market is concerned so that again depends upon the de- demand supply situation so sometimes what happen is when the demand is good even the adjustment can happen within a month also when the demand is not good the adjustment happens maybe in 6 months or something like that so too difficult to pinpoint exactly but yes there are mechanisms by which any cost escalation or cost decrease is to be adjusted with the market depending upon many factors right so is it fair to say that if you take you at least uh, Uh, let's say uh, four to six months before you are able to completely pass on the cost to the customers. Yeah, uh, I think uh, it's just anybody's guess. Uh, I I don't say your number is absolutely right, but maybe you are a little close to here and there. Okay, thank you. And then the last question on the uh, HMG process. uh not process but you know how do you plan to finance it assuming you win in the supreme court uh how do you plan to uh, finance it and uh, 
uh, she will just give a little more color on that side. So it is. It will be primarily a debt, uh, but I can't disclose the numbers here because of the confidentiality. Okay. So you're not planning to. Uh, okay. Fair enough. I'll take it offline. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all participants: you may press star and one to ask question. The next question is from the line of Viraj Mahade from Money Grow India. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Congratulations on stable results. Just a question: In the absence of the HNG acquisition for the next financial year, can you guide us towards a revenue growth number, either through volume, the bottlenecking, and/or price increases? Sorry, I missed your voice. So, what was the first part of HNG? I said in the absence of the HNG acquisition. In the absence of I HNG. Towards the volume growth number for next year. Yeah. Volume based on de bottlenecking and or price increases. So, a revenue growth number in the absence of HNG. Uh, so, I think overall uh, we should be able to achieve around six to eight percent volume growth. Okay. Because uh, and this is this is I'm talking of a run rate basis, not an absolute basis, because okay. Mr. Kosta has already spoken about you know additional uh, volume um, build up, capacity build up, due to debottlenecking right. in the existing system. Uh, we have 154 ton furnace, uh, uh, which is a new you know high end furnace which is under loading process. Hmm. So uh, the overall volume availability can be in a range of around six to ten percent. Understood. Understood. And again, in the absence of the HNG acquisition for a second, given your debt is now 500 odd crores, are you likely to be completely debt free within the next six months? So that, in a way, you are asking an EBITDA from me, actually. <laughs> That's difficult to comment. You have to build your own model based on the current profile. Uh, right now. So the goal is to deleverage apart from HNG? So there is no other recognition of money right now. So you know, uh, we have we invest money in terms of creation of capacities. We invest money in terms of you know creating efficient business model that that requires some investment. Else, right. most of the money goes into reduction of debt right now. Right. Okay. Great. Thank you. All the very best. The EBITDA which we are generating, either it is for the future investments or it goes towards the reduction of debt. Hmm. Great. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nikhil Gada from Abakus AMC. Please go ahead. Uh, uh, yeah, hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. So the first uh, uh, question is, uh, uh, you know, we are seeing some increase in the fuel cost uh, in terms of the gas power cost as well. Uh, will that in any ways impact our, uh, our margins in the coming quarters? How do we see the power and fuel cost going for us in the coming quarters? So Rajesh uh, has already spoken extensively on this uh, in the last one or two questions. So if there is an increase, so there is a lead lag time on which again a question was there, what is that lead lag time? Very difficult to comment on lead, lead lag time, but it's more of, you know, once once it is there and once it is established that some price adjustment is, is to be done, then then, you know, the discussion starts with our customers. So, if there is a price increase for definitely one or two quarters, uh, the impact may come through, a negative impact, but ultimately it gets recouped also in the future. And similarly, when the price falls, a similar lead in a lag time is there in terms of, uh, you know, uh, price adjustment. So, uh, since it's not a one set of a customer, it's a varied set of a customer with varied set of SKUs and varied requirements. Mm -hmm. That's why, you know, Rajesh made a comment, very difficult to estimate the exact time, you know, like if a question comes to whether it happens in three months or two months, you know, it's very difficult. It's a, it's an adjustment formula which is there and you if you see the moving averages stuff, you know, then you will see that it, it automatically gets adjusted. Uh, so, Sita, I will add on what you are saying. One more thing. The sensitivity towards the cost increase with the price has the two uh, edge sword. On the one side, if you are too sensitive, you are destabilizing the markets. If you are too much stable, then probably you hit your other numbers. So somewhere the, the mid approach has to be there, where the sensitivity has to be adjusted in such a way so that the market doesn't hit us badly and we don't hit our numbers badly. 
and in between some way or the it's a very analog type of structure it's not a very zero one structure like uh, um, uh, digital structure where i can say at uh, three months or two and a half months things can be adjusted so many factors taking in consideration the price adjustments or the cost transfer adjustments are being done uh got it sir uh, so my, my question uh, basically pertains to the fact that we have seen a consistent uh, you know improvement in our ebitda per ton uh, metric i think we went from 6000 to 7 and a half 8000 and now we are close to 9500 uh, definitely a, a good part of it is also because of uh, a lower power and fuel cost and also better utilizations okay so, but so what, but yeah. major part is this because of the bottlenecking the bottlenecking not quantitatively but even qualitatively the bottlenecking mm -hmm. uh, understood sir so uh, so my question is that uh, uh, what kind of a range uh, is it there a range based uh, working that we do or let's say somewhere down the line uh, if the margins go to close to 7000 we are okay to work at that or we have to take an immediate action just wanted your uh, uh, thought process on that uh, possibly uh, being a working executive uh, this is a part of a little confidential strategy at what level what we have to do and to what because this information is available to our competitors and our customers also so we okay. may be like to be little selective in answering uh, these things which may impact us in a wrong way in our business but yes we do understand we have to deliver to our shareholders the best possible results and uh, on the other side uh, it is our commitment to see that our customers remain happy stable and associated with us for a long term so keeping two aims in mind so we work out the things understood sir and sir my second question is just an extension to this uh, where we are seeing the gross margins uh, uh, you know uh, on an absolute level you know it is improving to 70% plus uh, for last couple of quarters is it only because of lower raw material cost or is it also some benefit of product mix that we are seeing that's what i'm saying when i say the bottlenecking the bottlenecking qualitatively and quantitatively okay quantitatively okay. means i add the quantity qualitative means product mix hmm. got it got it sir and so uh, just the uh, the uh, last question on this uh, we have seen uh, specifically uh, you know when i look at the segment data the investment property uh, ebit numbers uh, consistently they were at close to 4 cr 4 uh, crores uh, they have gone down to 3 crores is there any change in uh, uh, you know the uh, entire lease terms with uh, the other company that is impacting this so there are you know some of the times one of one of quarters you know you get some insurance expense or some expense okay. but the uh, they are they are uh, consistent as such so no no much change because most of them are already set for very long term periods okay sir got it uh, thank you so much for answering my, all my questions and all the best thank you thank you the next question is from the line of maraj from aryan capital please go ahead yeah thank you for the opportunity sir congratulations on a good set of results uh so a few things so firstly i'd like to understand what have been going on in the hearings what discussions have been going on because there were a couple of hearings in december and jan so just want to understand what is the current uh, what, what is the status on the proceedings right now so uh, you know our case was last heard on 16th of october so after i am talking supreme court now in the court of chief chief justice and uh, after that there has been number of listings which have happened but uh, uh, we couldn't get the time for hearing you know so the hearing proceedings have not yet initiated uh, but uh, uh, but the case do come up for listing again and again so we have a net, next uh, listing on uh, coming friday Okay, so uh, the chance for hearing is there on Friday, or is it just the listing date? Uh, so I can't comment on it. It's, it's all you know with the, uh, under the purview of the courts, which and the honourable justices who are there, you know, they are the best judges to make a judgment or you know what to be heard and one when to be heard. Understood. Right. Okay. So just to uh, reconfirm on the specialized line, uh, you mentioned that the utilisation is 60 to 65 percent currently, right? 65 to 70 percent. 
सिक्स्टी फाइव टू सेवेंटी सर आर देर एनी टू अंडरस्टैंड हाउ क्विकली कैन वी रैम दिस अप टू हंड्रेड परसेंट has already answered just few minutes back so it may take another 12 to 18 months in terms of you know fully loading the plant and when i say fully loading it is generally you know 85 90% loading and after that you know the game is different you know in terms of reaching 90% plus on uh, loading you know you have to work very extensively on the technical side with the furnace and that gives the best efficiency so right now we are looking at you know engaging with the customers building their Uh, you know what we call that uh, long term requirements whatever whatever they want and also meeting their you know their their criteria you know what all uh, they look for both international and domestic customers understood are we uh, in any plans to add more capacity on the specialized uh, side right now or will we still wait till we reach optimum utilization over here so we are keeping uh, it open uh, as such uh, uh, we'll wait until once we fully load it you know and uh, this is uh, this is a big opportunity but will unfold piece by piece so nothing as as such which is approved by the board uh, right now for the further expansion on this so as and when the board takes a call then you know but we keep evaluating various options understood and just lastly uh, i missed the part of uh, uh, additional de bottlenecking capacity that is coming in so did, did we put a figure to it what would be the de bottleneck capacity Uh, it is close to around 100 tons. Uh, it may not be 100 tons, but uh, it can be anywhere between 80 to 85 tons per day. Understood. Thank you so much, and all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Neharika from Equitas Investment. Please go ahead. Uh, hi. Thank you for the opportunity. So my question is regarding the capex. So what amount have we targeted for FY25? and this is including the depotlating which we were just talking about so i think next year we should spend somewhere around 150 crores plus around 150 crores uh, primarily on the relining and the expansion and there would be some other capexes uh, which are linked to further building up the efficiencies so you know the overall capex can be ranging around you know 125 to 150 crores around this is based on the scenario today If we take anything further, because you asked a question for financial year 24-25, so I am answering it today based on the approvals which we have from the board today. Okay, I got it. And for this furnace three, I believe will be shut for relining. So tentatively, how many days would the shutdown be for? Seven seventy-five days. And this we are planning to take in quarter two of FY25. Uh, maybe quarter three. Maybe quarter three. Yeah. Okay. and uh, uh, so i think that you have explained this but just to get clarity that when we say that 30% of our sales would be formula based so i believe with soda ash prices no 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 i am not saying i say 70% 60 to 70 can be formula based okay and the rest would be benchmark to uh, what exact index as in market conditions no so market conditions and conditions um i couldn't hear you sorry so so then is uh, 30 40% is linked to market negotiation and conditions that how much is the product demand supply so we negotiate on the spot and then you know we agree on the price these are not large quantity contract this is small quantity contract uh, so this 30 35% if it is spot so ideally my realizations for the quarter would have been good because my raw material prices were suppressed the so dash so is my understanding correct Yeah, but it, can you repeat? But uh, yeah, I I take your this thing. It it is like this. But your next question I will not be able to answer. You know, now you want me to decipher on the spot price, bit of pattern, and that that will not diverge. You know, because no, I just want to clear my understanding that if if it is thirty to thirty five percent is spot, then ideally realizations would have been good, considering yes. the soda ash prices are going one like down. But uh, uh, no, let me answer you in this. when we say there is a formula based pricing so there is a mechanism of calculation and it can go up but when we say it is non formula based that doesn't mean that we are going to get a better price or a worse price it depends purely purely on the demand supply scenario of the class at that particular moment in some moment you can have a better price than the formula price sometimes you can get a worse price than the formula price it all depends upon the condition at that time 
Okay. And, and then uh, there is a and then there is a continuous continuous qualitative de bottlenecking also. So we are entering into high end products. We are entering into value added products, premiumized products. So all those things we are entering by de bottlenecking our manufacturing capabilities. So that can give us the edge over the others to cater some specialized products in that category. Then you are entering not only the type of the product, then you are also entering in the so many other areas like warehousing, delivery on time, so many more things are there uh, which can give you the better realization or results for the bottom line. Okay. And my last question on the soda has some insight uh, on the Red Sea, on the supply coming up because I believe Europe demand is going down. So some insight that where do you feel the market is for soda ash? Uh, see, soda ash is produced globally. Soda ash is imported. Soda ash is local also. Soda ash is also coming from China and soda ash is also coming from Africa. So Red Sea will get affected if the soda ash is coming from Turkey or Europe and maybe partly from the uh, this thing. If the soda ash is on the uh, west coast of America, so it can come through the other channel uh, through the Japan side, which will not affect the uh, Red Sea area. So again, it depends from where we are buying or which one is cheaper. So right now, yes, because of the Red Sea, there is an issue. There is an impact also on the prices part. But then there are other countervailing uh, factors which are keeping the things intact. So I think there is not a much impact on us as such. And we are taking various type of, uh, uh, what do you call, solutions to keep the things going at a lowest cost. So we have suppliers in place even there if there is... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No problem at all. No problem. We have enough suppliers. Yeah, that was it from my side. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Siddharth from Trust Investment. Please go ahead. Yeah, hello. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, congratulations on the good set. Sorry, sir, you are not audible. Capacity is around 4,000 tons per day. Uh, is it fine now? Yes, yes. Yeah. So, uh, congratulations on the good set of numbers. Uh, actually, I joined the... Just yes, I can get it. Yes, yes. We are unable to hear, sir. Your voice is breaking. <laughs> Uh, just give me a second. Is it better? Yeah, it's better now. Yeah. So basically, uh, uh, so my question was regarding the HNG plant. Uh, the current capacity is 4,000 tons. And uh, suppose if we get that plant after the all the approvals and all. So what is that uh, quantity capacity that we need to sell off uh, for the CCI? And is there any uh, capacity that we need to sell before uh, getting it on our books? So uh, we have got the CCI approval, and there are subset of conditions under the CCI approval. Yes. Uh, I would request that if you can visit uh, the CCI website, and because it's a large, uh, large, very large order, ranging around I think 70, 80 pages. So right. most of your questions will be answered there. So uh, we'd resist oh. giving a response from our side because many of the data which is relating to uh, these acquisitions are confidential in nature as for the, uh, you know, the offer document. And uh, we are uh, constrained to talk, uh, not talk about the same. Uh, okay, okay. Oh. You can get the CCA order on the CCA website. That will help you, please. Yeah, fine. I'll go through it. Uh, thank you and all the best. Uh, that's, that, that's it from my side. Thank you. A reminder to all participants, you may press star and one to ask question. The next question is from the line of Pramod Dangi from Unifi Investment. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks again. Uh, but just the you know, uh, bookkeeping question on the employee cost and the operating cost. Uh, if I look at the last calendar year 2022, our employee cost was in the range of around 40 crore rupees per quarter, which is for the last five quarters is now uh, increased to 50. 50 crore rupees a quarter. 
Uh, so, is it the new bears, or are we going to uh, have some more adjustment as we go ahead uh, in the bears bet or the play cost? So, Rajesh. Rajesh, you are there. Uh, I'll take your other question. Oh, oh sorry. If, if you see uh, changes in the overall structure, initially there was a team for a commercial glass, a commercial container glass. So from 1st January 2023, uh, the 154-ton uh, uh, high-end uh, furnace has come into the picture. Uh, the full benefits in terms of the sales of, yeah, are yet to be realized, but you know the selling a high-end furnace and a, a high-end uh, product and the low-end products require a different expertise. So we have few subset of people who are distinct. So as a result of which it is there, and also due to the fact that you know there are natural increments when you work in an industry when you're performing good. So this is a combination of few factors like that. Okay. So also, since now for the last four quarters or the five quarters, this is it is almost 50 crore rupees per uh, per quarter. So. If, if we go with will it go with, uh, with the inflationary pressure to the you know, 55, 60, or if we remain at the 39, 50 on the current capacity, uh, that's what we want to understand. But no, this, no. Too, too uh, mind a question, you know, to answer, you know, like will it be 50? Because uh, okay. here we can give a broad guidance. We can't. Uh, yeah, more broadly. Yeah, same thing with the operating cost also, because we see that uh, the operating cost went from 100 uh, crore rupees to 120, 125 for the last two quarters. So I can answer your question in a way that there are some natural increases in the cost which are inflation led. So while creating your business model, you please build those inflationary costs into it. Uh, because it's very, very difficult for any organization to give an answer like what will be the exact manpower cost next year. Because it's contingent on so many factors, uh, you know, which are linked to business strategy and also business operations control. I understand it. Okay, thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Maharaj from Aryan Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity again. Uh, sir, I just had one more question regarding the acquisition. So, recently we were reading about the news that SBI is looking to sell its uh, part of its loan to uh, an ARC. If that happens, will it anyway hamper the current proceedings uh, or the uh, acquisition through NCLT? Would there be any change in that? Mm, what I can do is uh, the loan is being, uh, this is a public news. I think SBI is trying to sell their share in the target asset. Uh, we feel that uh, there shouldn't be any any change because COC has already voted us and our and application is already pending before NCLT. Uh, but there can always be ifs and buts uh, to anything. But give a, giving a form answer, it's, you have to talk to a legal guy in a sense, you know, like what can be the ramifications. But internally, we feel that our gut feel that this should not impact anything. Understood. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Niharika from Equitas Investment. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, thank you again. Just a small clarification. I wanted that the furnace tree, which we are saying that will be uh, shut for relining, the capacity of this furnace is how much? Uh, right now, the capacity is 275, operating at 250. So it can be close to around 340. Okay. Oh, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amnish Agarwal from Prabhudhas Viladar Private Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so, uh, in the last con call, you had indicated that uh, you were chosen uh, under the NCLT to buy out the HNG facilities, but uh, the same has been challenged in the court. So, any update on the same and has that issue been resolved? No, it is still pending between before the Supreme Court. Uh, and Honorable Supreme Court and Honorable Judges are yet to decide on it. Okay, so any timeline or anything by when it could be decided? No, very difficult to comment on the court proceeding timelines. It can happen, you know, in next one week or it can it may take a you know longer time also. Okay, and the second question is that, for example, our margins have been improving steadily over the past few quarters on a structural basis. In a steady state, where do you think the margin should stabilize? 
So we have already given a guidance that uh, margin ranges don't look at quarter to quarter because it's very difficult to you know justify anybody on a quarter to quarter basis. But medium to long term, uh, we feel uh, uh, EBITDA margins ranging 21-23 percent uh, based on the current market conditions. They are justifiable margins. Um, that way. <coughs> okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Chandresh Malpani from Nivesha Investment. Please go ahead. So thank you for the follow-up. So in the interview today, you said that uh, we have moderated the guidance from 15 to 18 percent to 12 to 13 percent for the current year. So how about the next year? So is it primarily dependent on HMG's acquisition that we will be growing because our debottlenecking is coming in Q3 FY25, and that will also result in some revenue loss. So any comments on the uh, growth side? So basically, we have answered this question that HNG today has a sufficient capacity, you know, and uh, it doesn't make any justification for anybody to build up additional capacities today uh, because uh, these are very costly, uh, you know, activities in terms of very capital intensive procedures. So uh, uh, although there has been a delay, which uh, which is called, which is there in terms of. Uh, the acquisition of HNG, but we are ready to acquire any time once the court approves it. Uh, but uh, it's very natural that whatever time the court takes, we have to take it. Uh, we are moving in a strategic manner. We are not moving in an ad hoc manner here. Uh, you know, ad hoc manner would have been that we start setting up our own greenfield projects, spending this. So we are moving on a strategic path, and uh, in a strategic path, if there is a delay, you have to bear with that delay as such. Uh, because uh, the long term, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's all linked to the long term plan rather than a short term ad hoc plan. In terms of short term things, we are doing a number of things. Mr. Kosla has already spoken about it. Yeah. The bottleneck, take up, you know, higher throughput. So, so all these strategies are also leading to, you know, advent of many other, uh, other uh, what do you call that, uh, by, um, byproduct thoughts, you know, which will enhance uh, our capacities and the uh, capacity utilizations. Okay, sir. Thank you. This helps. Thank you. Thank you. As that was the last question, I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Uh, I thank everybody who is there on the call today and uh, asking questions. A uh, few of the questions we may not have been able to answer and our apologies for the same because uh, there are constraints in the various confidentialities uh, which are relating to the acquisition. Uh, but definitely uh, we feel that uh, once we have court orders and all the all the things in place, uh, we are ready to move very very fast in terms of acquiring uh, the asset and taking control of it. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks again. Thank you. On behalf of Dollar Capital, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.